You know, I want to start us off with a quote of something that I heard that really changed my life. I wish I remember who said it so that I could give credit to the originator of it. But the quote went something like this. The mind is like a rubber band and when it's stretched, it can never go back to its original state. And man, that was such a powerful statement that I heard because it's so true. You stretch a rubber band or you pull it apart and it loses a little bit of its elasticity every single time and it never can go back to the original shape. And when your mind is stretched, it's the same way. It's like once you know something to be true or you experience a better way of living, a different way to make money, it is very hard to go back to an old way of thinking, a old way of making money. So I want to share with you some of the stories that pretty much led me to a state where I can say, I don't think I'll ever stop investing <laughs> because with what I know about the stock market, what I've experienced and what I have lived and gone through, there's nothing that can take me back the opposite way and say, you know what? This isn't worth it. I don't think this works and I don't want to do this anymore. I believe I'll always be invested in some shape or form and always interested in talking about the stock market until I pretty much can't talk or I don't have eyes. And even if I don't have eyes, I'll be trying to listen to CNBC or something and hear what's going on with the stock market. So let me take you back to 18 year old Jason Brown. And so all my life, we pretty much grew up poor. I finally get $2,000 from my graduation high school money and I take it to the bank because I want to be rich. And at that point, I was already infatuated with the stock market and the possibilities because of what I had seen it do in other people's life. And mainly these other people were people that were like on TV. I didn't know anybody personally who was making money and living off the stock market. But I heard that this was the holy grail. This was the ultimate place. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and he talked about the ultimate quadrant actually he has a book called cash flow, flow quadrant robert kiyosaki and he talked about the ultimate quadrant to end up in is the i quadrant which is the investor quadrant and if you're not familiar with it there's the b um, or there's the e s and then b i so e is the employee quadrant s is self-employed b is business owner i is the investor quadrant and he talked about how that was the ultimate quadrant to end up in and so I was always fascinated with the stock market. I had started reading Rich Dad Poor Dad at about 18 years old, 19, somewhere around there. And then I got cash flow quadrant not too far after. And so when I took that $2,000 and took it to the bank and said, I want to open an investment account, I, my mind had already been expanded that the market was the place to be. If you want to be rich, you want to be wealthy, this is where everybody ultimately ends up. And when you really think about it, we do all end up in the stock market some way, somehow. If you think about anybody that works a job, what are they counting on for their retirement? They're counting on their contributions to their 401k, or if you work in public services, like a teacher, a firefighter, a police officer, I believe it's a 403b. And so they're counting on those contributions to serve them in their later days. And so all roads lead to the stock market. If you run a business, you're typically self-funding an IRA or you have a 401k set up by the company that you own, you're contributing to it and your company is matching it. But all roads lead to the stock market and to invest in. And so I'm like, okay, if all roads lead to investing in the stock market, why don't I just start there? Why don't I just start initially learning how it works? So that's why I was initially fascinated with it. Fast forward a little bit, they, the, the bank loses my money and I end up taking the rest of my money out, which they lost $1,300. I had 700 left. I spent $200 on some gym shoes, some Jordans at that point. I'm like, look, I got to have something to show for this money. And then I have $500 le left and I started investing in the stock in the company that I worked for, which was Sprint PCS, which was $5 a share. And so after I got really good at flipping that $500, I asked myself the question, how can I get more money into the machine? So my brain had already been expanded from reading the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. In that book, I won't spoil it for you, but there's a chapter or a section. I used to listen to the audio book. And so there was a portion where he talked about, I want you kids to work for free. 
And he's like, what do you mean he wants to work for free? I thought you were going to teach us about how to make money. And he said, yeah, I want you to work for free because if I don't pay you, then your mind will start to see ways of making money all around you that you that before it would have went unnoticed, like you wouldn't have paid attention to that. And the kid's like, what? What you talking about? But as they started to work for free, they saw different ways to make money. And so by not getting paid, they had to figure out how to get paid, figure out and see opportunity around them. How does that relate to me? So I was like, how do I get more money into the machine? And because I didn't have any extra money, after reading that book, my my eyes and my brain was expanded. And so I had a scholarship to the Mike Illich School of Business here at Wayne State University, Detroit, Michigan. And I saw my friends getting student loan checks and I said, whoa, I wonder if I'd apply for a student loan if I get approved. And if I got approved, would they cut the check and the refund come to me? Because I saw other students getting refund checks and they were shopping and partying off their refund checks. So I applied for the student loan. I went and saw my financial advisor, said, hey, the, the, the financial advisor at the school, the student advisor slash financial advisor. I said, hey, I have a scholarship. How does this work if I apply for financial aid? So was like, oh, well, we'll apply your scholarship funds first and then we will apply the student loan. And if everything is paid off, they'll give a check back to you and you can use it for like living expenses if you want to live on campus, different things like that. And so, boom, that was it. That was the moment. Had it not been for Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I don't know if I would have paid attention to that opportunity because that's exactly what I did. I applied for the student loan. They paid the account. They gave me $10,000 back. So now I had $10,500 in my trading account. And that is how I got my first investment money. Well, I should say my second. (laughs) The first 2000 came from my graduation, my high school graduation. But that's how I got my first big lump sum of money to get into the stock market. And so as a 21 year old college student, I actually grew that $10,000 to a hundred, I think it was like $120,000, something like that. It was definitely over six figures. And so what happened at that point, my brain was expanded again. It was like a rubber band. It got stretched and it got stretched to a point where I'm like, wait a minute, I just made a hundred thousand dollars, not working, not working, no degree, no boss no interviewing for a job. And so I, you know, I dropped out of school. (laughs) So I dropped out of school. I'm full-time trading. Now, if you listen to this, the whole point is not to say drop out of school and become a full-time trader. What I'm trying to share with you is the stock market is so powerful. I can't think of a way for a 21 year old poor college student from Detroit, single parent household. I can't think of another way legally to make a hundred thousand dollars. I think it was like in seven months in that short a period of time. And I'm not selling drugs. I didn't get drafted to the NBA. I didn't get drafted to the NFL. I can't sing, I can't rap. And so what, I didn't hit the lottery. And so when you take all those factors away, I'm like, wow, my brain just got expanded because I'm like, I just made this money legally from home, from my computer and I don't have a college degree. That was a powerful, powerful, powerful moment for me where I just said, it's like the matrix, you know? I've seen too much now. I know too much. I can't go back to how things used to be. And so that was just another kind of stamp to say my brain is forever changed. I am never going back. I have made $100,000, so you can't tell me that this doesn't work. Even though the bank initially lost $1,300 of my money, that kind of expanded my brain, but in a negative way. But I looked at it as a positive because when they lost my money, it expanded my brain and then my thinking as well, because it said that was the first time I realized that a professional, a quote unquote professional could lose money And that was the first time that I realized that just because somebody went to school for this, so they got a series six, 63, series seven license, that does not mean that they exactly know what's best for me and how to manage my money and how to grow it to a hundred thousand dollars. They couldn't even grow my $2,000. And so that negative experience actually expanded my brain as well, expanded my thinking, expanded my world. Then when I made my first hundred thousand as a 21 year old college student, All I could think of was, where will I be when I'm 40? 
Where will I be when I'm 50 if I continue down this path? A couple of fun things that I remember doing once you made that money is uh, I remember, number one, I remember dropping out of school and I remember calling my mom and I remember saying, hey, mom, I just made $100,000. I didn't make it in one day, but like, I was like, mom, I made $100,000. Like, I'm not going back to school. And she said, actually, she said, what you mean you're not going back to school? And then she said, you're not quitting your job, are you? Because that might not last. Now, that that kind of, uh, that was a dagger in my heart. That was a dagger in my heart a little bit because I love my mom. What I was really calling her for is to hear, I'm proud of you, son. I'm excited for you. Keep going. Congratulations. How'd you do it? Teach me. But my mom, being from Mississippi, from the cotton picking South, grew up through slavery. All she knew was working the job. And so when she said, like, I hope you don't quit your job, I'm like, my job selling cell phones? <laughs> like, come on. But I still remember how proud I felt to be able to tell my mom, like, yo son made it, made $100,000. And even though she kind of stabbed me, I think I look back, that was just my mom caring about me, being worried about her son, not knowing how the stock market works and not really understanding how, how it lasts. But I remember after that, I said, wow, things are going to be a little bit different. So me and my cousin, he was trading too. We went to the dealership. Now my cousin, had he made over a hundred grand in the stock market as well. And so he was already full time in the market. And I remember he went and bought a Cadillac Escalade. And I was like, ooh, wee, that bad boy was fresh, right? Cadillac Escalade sitting on the big rims and i never forget he pulls up in the Escalade. I'm like, wow, we can afford these cars and we not selling dope. That was one of the most invigorating feelings. And people was always like, what do you guys do? What do you guys do? And when we told them like we're in the stock market, I don't even know that people believe us. They like, okay, is that code for like they sell dope? But we was just like, no, we in the stock market and I can't tell you the level of prestige that we felt to just be like, nah, we trade stocks. You know, it just, we felt, it just felt so good. It was like, nah, we don't hoop, we don't ball, we don't sell dope, we trade stocks and options. I'm telling you, I, I woo. <laughs> Listen, I know y'all can't see my face if you're not watching the video. Those watching the video, you can see my face. I'm telling you, I was grinning from ear to ear when we would tell people like, we stock traders. And I still feel like that, you know, just even recording this. I'm like, yeah, I'm a stock trader. It just has a prestige to it. And it felt good. So my cousin picked me up in the Cadillac Escalade. He took me to the Lexus uh, dealership. It's like, let's test drive some cars. I'm like, bet, let's go do it. We get to the Lexus dealership. We look at some cars. I test drive the GS300 because like, that's you. I'm like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? We knew to making this money. Let's chill out. And so cuz like, nah, I'm about to leave. I ain't picking you, like, I ain't picking you up to take you back home. He's like, the only way you get home is you driving the Lexus home. And I remember I was like, quit playing. Peer pressure is a mother effort. <laughs> so I had no plans on buying this Lexus GS300. We like 22, 23, something like that at this point. So I'm like, skip it, let's do it. So I buys the Lexus GS300. I'm telling you, even though I didn't have any intentions on buying that car, I am telling you what buying that car did for me was it just expanded my brain, expanded my mindset, expanded my thoughts one more time because I thought in order to get those cars, I had to be an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, I had to have my degree, probably had to wait till I'm 40 or 50 years old to get that car because I didn't really see any young people driving it, especially not like 22, 23 so to drop the Lexus GS300, current year, I had the current year Lexus GS300. And then I went to the, you know how we do. Y'all know how we do. I'm from Detroit. We went straight to the rim shop, dropped another three grand. We didn't take it straight to the rim shop, but like that, I think it was like a week later, went straight to the rim shop, dropped about three, four thousand dollars, put it on some 20 inch rims. Now I look back, I'm like, okay, we was clowning, <laughs> but <laughs> at least, you know, it make for a good story. So I put the Lexus on 20 inch rims and 
it's different when you get a sweet car and then when you get a sweet car and you customize it. Because it's like, whoa, whoa, not only did you get an expensive car, you end up putting some aftermarket 20-inch rims on it. I'm telling you, you couldn't tell me nothing. You couldn't tell me or my cousin nothing. But again, my brain was just so expanded because in that time, it was like, it didn't matter that it was a stupid car. I didn't spend 40, 50 hours a week working for it. And so people would say like, that's dumb to buy that kind of a car. I'm like, yeah, it's dumb when you buy it with dumb money, meaning like you traded hours for that. But when I didn't really trade hours for that money, I traded knowledge, I traded money to the stock market. It gave me more money back. I was like, I didn't buy it with dumb money. I bought it with smart money. So when I'm driving this Lexus, it represents something different to me because the stock market paid for this, not me working physical hard labor, going into the debt, barely could afford it. And so my brain was expanding because I'm like, okay, somebody else got a Lexus and they in debt. I got the Lexus and the market paid for it. That was the first time, that, well, not the first time, but that was one pivotal moment in my life. And I was like, oh, wow, this stock market thing can really make some dreams come true and it can make it come true in a short amount of time. You don't have to wait till you're 60, 70, 80 years old before you start enjoying some of the finer things in life. Now, if some of you are listening to this or watching this, you might not be in the cars, but I'm just telling you as an 18 year old kid from Detroit that was then 21, 22, able to buy a Lexus GS 300 and pay for it with the money from the stock market. That was big time to me, especially being from Detroit, buying a car that I never thought I'd be able to drive, moving into neighborhoods that I never thought I would be able to live in, or I didn't know if I would be able to live in them until I'm 40, 50, 60 years old. And so my brain was expanded in that moment. I think about another time that the stock market expanded. My thinking was, I remember buying, when I went, when moving into our first home, and we kind of scraped up the down payment and all that stuff for it. But then I remember looking at our dream home on the lake. And I never forget when we went to the house, wasn't even planning on buying a house. I just like to go to open houses and just look at houses, dream, think about the next level and went to the house. Long story short was like, man, we like this house. Let's put an offer in on it. And I never forget like, man, when we put an offer in, we got to make it strong. And so it's like, we go put a hundred thousand dollars down. I remember, but I had a hundred thousand dollar profit from the stock market. And so I was like, Psh, why not? Got a hundred grand from the market. We can put a hundred thousand dollars down. And I remember when the owners seen it and was like, wow, they offer it. Say they willing to put down a hundred thousand dollars. It's like, that's a strong offer. Now I remember them just kind of looking like, what, what does this young person do? Like, what, what, how he, how does he, what does he do? And how does he just add his cash? And then they was like, well, one of the things we want to discuss, cause they was for sale by owner. So it wasn't no agent in between us. I was like, one of the things we worried about is do you have to sell your, your old house before you could buy this one? Cause we've been burned before with people saying, oh, our house will be able to sell. And I'm like, no, nah, we don't even got to sell the old house. And we putting a hundred thousand dollars down. They was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. They don't have to sell their old house and they can put $100,000 down. Who are these people? But I remember sitting across from the table. I remember feeling like, oh, wow, this is different right here. Because I used to, I remember trying to get the first house and people would put 100000 down or they come buy a house for a quarter million cash. And I used to be like, who are these people and what do they do? How do, how do they get that kind of money? And then I finally was sitting across from the table like, yeah, old house, don't got to sell. New house, willing to put $100,000 down on it. And I'm like, whoa. That was one of those brain expansion moments when I was like, wow, I am one of those people now. <laughs> Jason Brown, you're here. You're one of those people. And I thought, wow, that was a powerful moment. One of those moments where it's like, I don't know. I mean, yes, people do this work in the job and some people save and work two jobs. I get it. I'm not knocking that. This ain't got nothing to do with how other people do it. I'm telling you how my brain got expanded from the stock market doing it for me, which is why I'm so passionate about the industry. Not only did we get the house, then we end up selling the old house, but we had both houses for, I don't know, a month or two. 
but it was like so powerful that I wasn't stressed. Wasn't like, oh my God, we got to hurry up and sell that. Like, I was like the market good, money's good, down payment's good. We got enough, like I never, it's been a, you know, I think about my childhood growing up. We didn't, we never really felt okay. We always felt like, hope the lights don't get cut off sometimes. Hope we got enough for food or if we wanted to play sports, my mom being a single parent, like, what are we going to sacrifice to pay for this equipment? But this moment in my life, I was like, I can have both cake, eat it too. Good car, old house, down payment on a new house. And I ain't got to worry about hurry up and sell that one for something go negative or we miss a payment. It was a really, really good feeling. And it was only a feeling for me that I got from being involved in the stock market. I never had a commission check worth a hundred thousand dollars, but the stock market provided me that type of money to hold down both houses and put the deposit down on a new one. Now, another day that really, 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 really changed my life was when I made, well, there's two, two days. So in the new house, in the new house with my daughter, I never forget. I made a hundred thousand dollars in one day. I made a hundred thousand dollars in one day. And so sometimes when I hit these milestones like that, I'll cut the camera on and record it. So if you search back over on my YouTube channel, you can see the video where I had my daughter in the video. And I'm like, why are we so excited? We just made a hundred thousand dollars in one day, in one day. So I had my daughter with me in that video and the message to my daughter, I'm speaking to my daughter. I'm like, look, the reason I want you in this video, cause she was like one years old. I'm like, the reason I want you in this video, I said, cause some point in life, people are going to tell you that something is not possible or something isn't for people like you, for people of color, whatever the case may be. And I was like, I just want you to be, I want you to be able to look back on this video, this monumental time in history. Cause that's what we're doing. We're documenting history. Every time we record a podcast, every time we went make money on a trade, pay off a house, whatever the case may be, we're documenting history. And I'm not doing that to show off on YouTube or Instagram. I'm doing that so that my kids can look back and be like, what was my daddy on? How did my, how did we get here? And they can go back and look like, wow, that's what dad was doing when we was one years old, two years old, three years old, four years old. When my daughter looked back on that video and be like, I was there when dad made that first hundred thousand dollars. He had me in the video. And so I made a hundred thousand dollars in one day. And that moment was so powerful because I had my daughter with me. Number one, number two, the job I used to work when I left, I think my salary was like little right at a hundred thousand or a little under. And then when you add bonuses and stuff like that, I can make over a hundred thousand. And so for me to make in one day, what I had left work in corporate America, 40, 50, 60 hours a week for, cause I was a regional manager when I left corporate America for a major cable company to make that money in one day. I was like, it's over. You can't tell me nothing. I will never leave this industry. My brain was like that rubber band. It was expanded one more time. My brain was expanded. My mind was expanded. How I view money. Everything was expanded once again. Now, I got many other stories, but I want to wrap up and leave you with this last one. And this one was like game changer. Y'all ever had a moments where it's like, if this happened, it's over. <laughs> and so we got a mortgage on this house on the lake. And I'm like, man, but part of me is just like, I don't, I won't feel 100% comfortable until I pay the house off. Cause then once you pay it off, can't nobody take it from you. You can come up with money to pay taxes, stuff like that. But once you pay it off, it's like, ah, this is us. We locked in. And so once we, once I was trading, looking for opportunities and I was like, boom, this it, this the opportunity. And I remember putting $200,000 into this one trade and I made Four hundred and sixty thousand dollars in one trade. That was another one that we documented for the channel. And I took that profit and I said, I'm paying off the house. I'm like, it's it. We done because we had no debt, no car notes, still had a mortgage. And I remember in that video, one of the things I said to myself was, I don't like having yeah, buts attached to my name. Do you know what a yeah, but is a yeah, but it's like, I don't have any debt, but my student loans. I don't have any debt, 
but my house. And so I was like, I don't want no yeah buts attached to the Brown last name. I don't want no, oh, I'm debt free. I'm doing well, but my house. No, I was like, I don't want no yeah buts. So I took that, made that $460,000, went right up to that bank, got the final amount owed on the house, <laughs> paid off that mortgage. And I was like, what just happened? I was like, we just paid off a 30 year mortgage in like two and a half years. We had just bought the house two and a half years earlier, paid off a 30 year mortgage. Woo! <laughs> Brain expanded, mind expanded. You cannot tell me the stock market don't work. Now I've lost money here and there, but this right now, this is about everything that worked and went in my favor. <laughs> and so, oh man, just reliving it. It's like, wow, we did that. We paid off this house on the lake. And that was just such a beautiful, such a powerful day because that was the first, that was the first day at the beginning of the rest of our life of removing the year, but from my family name, obviously, as long as I don't do nothing crazy and get in debt or go backwards or develop some type of bad habits, like I ain't even go speak that in existence. Bottom line is that was the beginning of never having year butts attached to the Brown family name. Something happened to me. My kids get the house free and clear. They ain't like, oh, but we got to go talk to the bank. Oh, but we got no, 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 no. It's free and clear. We own it. And so that was just a super powerful moment for me. And then if you follow me, okay, one more story. Cause I can't leave. I, I mean, I, that, that's the one to end on, but hold on. Then we took it a step further. I remember looking at an exotic car and I remember saying to myself, I can't get the exotic car if I still have a mortgage, I was like, use your mortgage, paying off your mortgage to be the reward for buying an exotic car. I never forget when I paid it off, I was like, does that mean I can get the exotic car now? And sure enough, I started researching exotic cars, started watching them. And that was the matter of fact, that same year, I think it was that same year. I end up buying the Ferrari convertible Ferrari, California T that bad boy was cold. I say was cold because I sold it. If you follow me now, I got the Rolls Royce, but man, to, to have that for convertible Ferrari paddle shifters, carbon fiber, convertible top diamond forged 20 inch rims. I mean, whoo, whoo, that bad boy was a, Beast, I videotaped when they dropped it off. I'm like, we got to get this on tape. Are they bringing that to my house? <laughs> Not the Ferrari. <laughs> and I just thought, oh my goodness. Once again, I am able to drive my dream car, live my dream life. And I'm not 40, 50, 60 years old at that moment, at that time. And so, man. When I just think about the power of the stock market, I'm telling you, my brain is like the rubber band. My mind is like the rubber band. It's been expanded. I didn't see too much. I didn't see too much. I know that this industry works. I know that it changes lives. I know that it makes dreams come true. And that's what we're doing at Power Trades University. We just trying to help other people realize how powerful the industry is and help other people's dreams come true. Because I know many people are like me wondering, they just like, I don't know, will this really work for me? Can this really work for me? And I'm here to tell you, if 18 year old Jason Brown, growing up in Detroit, single parent household, broke, only had $2,000 to his name and the bank lost 1,300, had to get started with a $10,000 student loan can do it. <laughs> I'm excited for you if you starting from where I was at, broke with no knowledge, and I'm even more excited for you if you starting ahead of me, meaning you got $10,000, you're not in debt, you got the support of a spouse or somebody, you got a good job, you are a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, you already got the income. I'm excited for you because I'm like, let's go. Now let's create legacy. But I'm also excited for you if you don't have money, if you feeling broke, you feeling scared, you feeling hopeless, because that's where I was at. 
And I was like, ooh, I don't know what can turn my life around as quick as the stock market. If it ain't dope, if it ain't robbing and stealing, if it ain't the lottery, I don't play basketball, so I ain't getting drafted for that. I can't sing or really rap. What else was going to change my life that quickly? That's what I asked myself. And I was like, the stock market, let's go. So listen, listen, I'm signing off saying, number one, you never go broke taking a profit. But number two, you can never take a profit if you don't get started. Y'all better quit playing with the stock market. It changed my life. It can change yours. I'll see you on the next episode. I will. I pledge my allegiance, not to the flag, but to the stock market. I will never leave you. She will never leave me. (laughs) 